Um, all right. Early on, we were challenged by MacArthur um, to say, you know, what, you know, why are you doing this? Um, uh, even though they were the initiators of it, Jonathan Fenton wanted us to articulate a set of principles. He wanted us to identify um, why this was important and be very explicit about it. About it. Um, <coughs> and we felt it was important to, to, to frame it this way. This is, really represents three different ways of thinking about, about the quote-unquote natural world. That there is biodiversity that, that, that we, or some set of we, care about. Um, but of course, there's also the, the whole ecosystem services con uh, conversation, and of course, then there are people in extractive industry and national governments concerned with development and so forth, who primarily when they view forests, they see them as natural resources to be exploited, hopefully, but not necessarily, in sustainable ways. <coughs> Um, <coughs> Trade-offs, of course, acknowledges uh, that you can't always get everything at once. You can't um, uh, always get what you want, uh, <coughs> and therefore, as a matter of principle, this project, and I think your domain four, is is um, based on the uh, idea that that uh, <coughs> the trade-offs are almost everywhere. Uh, at all times involved. And therefore, again, going back to what I said earlier, we need an approach, an integrative approach, um, to analyze and negotiate trade-offs. Um, <clears throat> this is the part that we haven't, if, if this earlier uh, visualization down here, um, this is the part that we're still working on, and I want to get be forthright uh, about that, that we we're working on developing the different, uh, what we're calling lenses, and I'll introduce those to you in a second. Um, but the, the what next part is, is where we're at right now. That's what we're starting to, to work on. Once you analyze a particular context, then what does it mean to negotiate? You know, are you just identifying uh, future research uh, uh, needs, or, or what else is there to be done? Um, <clears throat> so. This is um, what we've done just very briefly in, in putting together the case studies. Um, uh, we asked each of the um, uh, country research partners to put together these case studies, looking at these different factors. Uh, and um, in doing so, and this is part of the, that, that um, you know, what I think before would have felt dysfunctional, but now as we were acknowledging it, it felt not so dysfunctional, but um, that when we're talking about political factors, for instance, um, <clears throat> different disciplines, you know, think about what is political in different, very, very, very different ways. Um, so a political scientist might view politics in one way, and um, an anthropologist might view politics in another way, and not just in a matter of scale, but, but in terms of how we think about power and all of those kinds of issues. Again, between academics and practitioners, um, and between global and local uh, research and practice. <coughs> um, so, um, we developed a set of, one of the things that I mentioned, um, MacArthur challenged us to develop some principles. And, uh, <coughs> and these are still also a work in progress. These are ones that we've put together, but we consider these subject to review, revision, and so forth. Um, but uh, the first one simply being, um, don't forget uh, place and context. That certain kinds of models um, are very good at aggregating, uh, simplifying reality, um, and that captures an important reality. But we also need to keep in mind um, the complexity of real places, real people, real things, and so forth. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the second one really gets at the issue of, <clears throat> um, uh, of complexity and scale, and, and, and prompts us to take seriously what happens um, when you aggregate, and <clears throat> what happens when you think about trade-offs across different scales. And so, as we all know, I think trade-offs might be made at a scale, let's say, uh, in the context of a free trade agreement. 
right, that may have huge impacts on local contexts um, where local people have no clue that, that a trade-off was even made involving them that will result in the forest where they live being liquidated and turned into oil pump. Um, <coughs> um, and so in thinking about trade-offs, it's important to think about trade-offs across um, spatial, temporal, and institutional scales. Pluralism is uh, <coughs> really uh, the issue that I was getting at earlier. Recognizing, and to me this is one of the key things about the framework that we've been developing, that it acknowledges the value of different uh, perspectives. It doesn't say we can put all those perspectives together in a toolkit, put it on a shelf, and deliver results to you. What it says is reality is messy. Different disciplines and different fields of practice um, <clears throat> have different ways of understanding um, uh, local context, national context, global context, um, and the trade-offs that are being made, and that it's important to acknowledge those. Um, <coughs> um, humanity and nature, some of these may sound overly simplistic, but, but um, we felt it was important to sort of put forward um, uh, what we think is necessary for an adequate uh, way of approaching uh, trade-offs. And humanity and nature really just acknowledges the in, uh, inextricability of, of humans and nature. And social learning, finally, that <coughs> um, this really tells us that we, we don't and probably don't want to aspire to have a final product, right? That will say, here it is, here's, here's the trade-off framework, go use it. But that, that it has to be iterative, it has to be engaged with other institutions and other approaches and so forth. <coughs>